The work that we carry out is particularly appropriate in the oil and gas sector. And the reason for that is that in that sector there have been a number of major accidents which have led to large commercial losses or losses of life. I'm now going to work through an example of how we apply the tools and techniques to analyse human error in the oil and gas sector using the Human Factors Risk Manager software. I'm going to use an example here which is concerned with draining a high pressure absorber base. Now, as you can see on the screen, I've already carried out the initial part of the analysis where I've described the overall objective of the task, which is draining the HP absorber base. And the precondition for that task is that the absorber has reached the fill limit. In order to carry out this drain operation, the operator has to monitor the absorber and respond to higher level alarms. These numbers here are taken from the original procedure. So we often work with the original procedure before engaging in the interactive session with the people who actually carry out the task. This enables us to pre-analyze the task to some extent. Second subset is verify the instrumentation involved, positions for draining. Then, then there's, there's a task itself, drain the absorber base, and then various things that we do while this operation is in progress. So in total, there are seven subtasks. And if we perform all of those seven subtasks, we have actually achieved the overall objective of draining the HP absorber base. You can see here we've got a little cross, and that indicates that there's more detail below the analysis. So I'll click on that cross, and we can see that uh, at the next level down, uh, we have a more complicated plan, and we have three subtasks. So monitor the absorber, respond to high-level alarm, involves uh, three things monitor the HP absorber operation itself, confirming a radio check between the area technician and the control room operator, and instructing the area technician to go to the high pressure absorber itself. And the plan there is that if the, we do one, monitoring the HP absorber, if it comes into alarm, we then do two uh, and then three. So this gives you an example of the way that we combine together the plan and the individual task steps in order to do what is necessary to do the overall superordinate task here. Just to give you an example of the next one, you can see that verify instrumentation involved positions for draining, involves verification, informing the shift engineer and verifying the HP absorber valve positions. And again, there's another level of detail here. So this is how we carry out the task analysis. And this is done in interaction with subject matter experts, and it's done in a top-down basis. The next thing we do is to analyze potential failures, and there are several different ways of doing that, and I'll show you those in a moment. Before we move on to, the, to that, though, I'd just like to emphasize that in addition to the graphical representation of the task, we can also show the text-based representation of the analysis that we're conducting. So, the helpful thing about this is that as we perform the analysis with the operators, it's automatically documented in the form of, a, in the form of quite a, uh, a comprehensive report. Now I'll click, on, I'll click there on the risk assessment tab so that the, the type of dis information that's displayed in this area here that we call the data grid is relevant to risk assessment. So the next stage is to actually perform that risk assessment. So for example, we click on... Um, this activity here, open up the high pressure absorber graph on the DCS. So the question is who does that? So if we click on agent person, we can see that that is actually carried out by the, the CRO, the control room operator. And if we want to, we can display that under the box. And so if I click here, we can see that this data grid here, we're taken to the point in this data grid for the box that we've clicked on. So who actually carries out this work? This is this is the actual task. Open the HP absorber graphic on the digital control system. It's carried out by the control room operator. Uh, what type of activity is it? Well, if we click on the activity type tab, we can see that this hasn't yet been ascribed an activity, but it, actually it's an action. So if we click on the action tab, that goes yellow to say this is an action. 
If it's an action, there's certain types of failure modes that could occur. So let's say the failure mode could be the action is omitted. It'll be action 9. So that we fail to open the HP absorber graphic on the DCS. So the gra graphic not opened is the error. Actually, there's no particular direct consequences of that. Uh, the, there's, the, there's no major accident hazards. However, the consequence is that the operator is unable to control the draining operation leading to a, a, an outcome which we've looked at earlier, which is actually a, a potential release in 1.1. In so the high liquid level, level in this particular vessel could ultimately create problems and it could lead to a plant trip leading to possible excess flaring. So basically we're saying if this failure occurs, one of the things that can happen is that in, in, in step two, we were looking at just now in this step, this could give rise to the same failure mode as we've analyzed earlier in the analysis. So that shows you how we construct the task analysis uh, on the basis of the original procedure sometimes and using inputs from the operational team. And once we've constructed the analysis, we can then do a risk analysis to see what type of failures might occur. You can see that this analysis includes a consideration of what the existing risk control measures are, uh, what factors are going to influence the failure, and so on. Once we've concluded that analysis, we can output the whole analysis in the form of a, of a, of a procedure. And it's asking me whether I want to sign off column at the right of the procedure. I'll say yes. Ask me whether I want to show any pictures. We can embed picture files in this. And now it will now create an analysis, a, a, a procedure, with the structure of the procedure will correspond to the task analysis that we've just performed. So this provides, a, this provides a way of developing a very clear logical structure for the procedures and indeed for the training. And that information is produced automatically and also any risk Im information that we've applied is carried through into the procedures, say a, a warning or whatever, carried through into the procedure and uh, that, that means that the procedure, the task analysis and the risk assessment are all if you like, uh, emanating from the same source.